What's up, fellow investors? My name is Matt. In this video, we're going to walk through my stock analysis of the company United Health Group, ticker symbol UNH. On this channel, it's my goal to log my journey to financial freedom by sharing my portfolio and show how I'm doing this through disciplined saving and smart investing. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. I put a lot of time and effort into creating these videos, so it really helps support my channel. Now let's dive into UNH. United Health Group is a very large company when it comes to the healthcare industry. The stock is currently trading at around $390 a share, and this gives it a market cap of about $370 billion. United Health Group is a really interesting industry because it really owns and operates two complementary businesses, Optum and United Healthcare. And because these two work together, it helps create a lot of synergies and helps improve the operating efficiency of United Health Group as a whole. So here is a pie chart and a slide that shows United Healthcare's revenue by its different segments. From its last annual report in 2020, United Healthcare did about $337 billion in revenue. And its largest segment is going to be its healthcare segment, which brought in about $200 billion in policy premiums. This makes it one of the largest healthcare providers in the United States. The next three revenue segments all fall under the Optum Business umbrella. So first is Optum Health. Optum Health did about $39.8 billion in revenue in 2020, and this is the segment that includes a wide variety of health-related services that it provides to its patients and different healthcare providers. It's responsible for selling services that are basically going to help improve quality and patient and provider satisfaction. This segment was responsible for just about 12% of United Healthcare's total revenue. The next segment under Optum that we're going to look at is going to be Optum Insight. Optum Insight is the technological and data analytics arm under UNH. Optum Insight provides software and services that helps hospitals and physicians identify problems and improve performance in their own businesses. This is currently the smallest segment under UNH, um, bringing in about $10.8 billion in revenue which is just about 3% of the total revenue, but it is one of the faster growing parts of this business with some of the best margins because it deals with software and technology. The final Optum business we're gonna look at is Optum RX. Optum RX is the full-fledged pharmacy care service that has a network of over 67,000 retail pharmacy locations. This is the next largest segment of United Healthcare behind its uh, actual healthcare coverage that it provides. It brought in about $87.5 billion in revenue, which is about 26% of its total revenue. On this slide, I have a graph of United Healthcare's revenue growth over the past five years. And as we can see from 2016 to 2020, United Healthcare's top line revenue grew from about $184.8 billion to about $257 billion in 2020. And it's good to know that its top line growth has been pretty consistent over the last five years. It saw its weakest revenue growth year in this last year in 2020, and this is mainly due to COVID's effect on the economy. Um, its growth on premiums really got hurt probably by the number of layoffs in just the general economy, and the quarantines probably affected its, its products and services businesses. But it's good to know that its premiums and services segments are both growing in parallel with each other still, and there's no part of the business that's been lagging or, or dropping off. I also expect there to be a pickup in growth going forward, definitely as the, the economy reopens and US GDP is expected to be very good next year. And I also expect it to also benefit just because the employment data is gonna get better and more people are gonna return to work. Because United Healthcare is a unique type of business where it has its healthcare business and services business, we need to look at a couple different ratios to measure how efficiently the company operates. So for the healthcare business, it's important we look at the medical care ratio. It's gonna show us how efficient the company is at translating the premiums it collects on its healthcare coverage into its bottom line profits. And the way that this ratio is calculated is it basically takes the medical care costs that the company paid out throughout the year and it's dividing it by the premium revenue that it collected. So the lower this ratio is, the more profitable the healthcare side of the business is going to be. Typically, this number is between about 81 and 83%, as we saw from 2016 to 2019. But in 2020, the medical care ratio for UNH dropped to 79%, which is 
mostly due to the fact that a lot of the typical medical care expenses and surgeries were put to the side with all focus basically put on treating COVID. So this will probably return to the 81 to 83% range next year or more towards the normal range as more people are vaccinated and we continue to reopen. The second ratio that's going to be important for us to understand is going to be its operating margin. This is simple as it takes its operating income and divides it by its total revenue. And the higher this ratio is, the better because it shows the company's becoming more efficient at taking its revenue and converting more of it into profit. And UNH has done a really good job of improving this because in 2016, its operating margin was 7%, and it's grown that to 8.7% in 2020. An increase in by 1.7% over five years doesn't seem to be super impressive, but it is in a low margin industry. So if you look at the percentage increase from 7% to 8%, that's about a 25% increase. And the best way to show how efficient United Healthcare is in this industry is to compare these ratios to its competitors. And if you look at United Healthcare's medical care ratio of 79%, it has the best ratio compared to the rest of the industry. It's closest to Cigna, but I think this can be mostly explained by the size of Cigna. United Healthcare is about five times bigger when it comes to its healthcare industry, but if we compare it to another large player like Anthem, it has about a 5% uh, competitive advantage when it comes to being more efficient on converting its premiums into profit. And if we look at its operating margin of 8.7% last year, uh, it is it is way ahead of its competition. Nobody else is really even close. No one is even in 7%. And in fact, if you take uh, United Healthcare's 2016 operating margin of 7%, it's still better than all of its other competitors. And this is really due to the fact that UNH has a very good business setup and the synergies between Optum and United Healthcare really become evident when you start to compare United Healthcare to other businesses. And now most importantly, Let's take a look at how this has affected the bottom line. This is a chart of United Healthcare's net income growth from 2016 to 2020. It's grown its net income from just $7 billion to more than doubling to $15.4 billion in 2020. And that is very impressive because if we look at its compounded growth over those five years, that comes to a compounded annual growth rate of 21.5%. And since it is a healthcare company, it's also important that we look at its return on equity because as it's collecting premiums and cash, it's also gonna be recording liabilities for medical care costs and other expenses that it's expecting to pay out on those policies. So this is a good measure of how efficiently the company uses shareholder capital or shareholder equity to get its returns. And this has also been very strong over the last five years. Uh, it's typically been around 25%, and it really shows no signs of weakening. With every business we're looking at investing in, it's so important we look at all of its financial statements. We now have a pretty good understanding of how the company operates or information that we'd find on the income statement. But now let's look at the balance sheet and cash flow statement to see what more we can learn about this business. So this is the balance sheet that United Health Group filed with its 10K for its results in 2020. Um, its current assets is sitting at about 53.7 billion right now, and this looks like it's mostly comprised of $17 billion in cash and about 24, 25 billion dollars in accounts receivable. This is lower than its total current liabilities of $72.4 billion. But if you look at what's in its current liabilities, um, it has about, so this $21.8 billion in medical care costs payable and other accounts payable of $22.5 billion. Um, this $20.4 billion in other current liabilities is actually related to the HSA accounts that it has under its management. So this is unlikely that this 20. $20.4 billion is going to turn into actually cash out of piano expenses. But even if it does have to pay out a lot, it has about $41 billion in long-term investments. And this is mostly coming from the premiums, uh, investing the premiums that it's collecting in the healthcare business. And continuing down the balance sheet, it has a lot of money and goodwill, a lot of assets. And this number means that the company has been doing a lot of acquisitions because even from 2019 to 2020, this number increased from about $65.6 .6 billion to 71. So it looks like the company has been acquiring uh, other businesses to help uh, boost its top line growth. But overall, this is a very healthy balance sheet because if we look at 
its total assets of about $197.2 billion compared to its total liabilities of 126. It's got a very good margin between those, and this gives it a shareholder equity of about $68.3 billion. And this is United Health Group's latest cash statement that it filed with its 10K. If we look at its cash flows from operations, um, this is taking its basically net income that we saw in the income statement of $15.7 billion, adding back in its uh, depreciation, a non-cash expense of about $2.9 billion, and also the non-cash expense of share compensation, um, about $670 million. However, we also see that this cash flow from operations really increased to $22 billion, and that's because we saw a really big increase in AP where it's basically deferring expenses. So this helped increase its cash flow from operations, but this isn't really representative of the free cash flow. Its free cash flow is mainly going to be its net income plus its depreciation. As, as we can see, it's really good that this has been consistently growing over the past three years. But now if we go down to its cash flow from investing activities, we can see that the company spent about $7 billion in acquisitions. And over the last three years, it has been putting quite a bit of money towards acquisitions and reinvesting into the business through CapEx, uh, purchases of property, equipment, and capitalized software. This constitutes about $9 billion out of this $12.5 billion in investing activities. And it looks like it had about $13 billion uh, in investments that matured and it reinvested all those. And then it looks like it took the extra cash from its increased AP and also invested some of that because that's how we got to the $12.5 billion that it spent in investing. And if we continue down to look at its cash flow from financing activities, this decreased by about $3.6 billion. And this is good because this means net net that the company is returning money back to its stockholders through share repurchases of about $4.25 billion and dividends because it spent about $4.5 billion on dividends this year. And in fact, if we look at the dividends over the last three years, it's had some very healthy increases because it was only spending $3.3 billion on returning dividends to shareholders, and that's now increased to $4.5 billion. So that's a really good sign to see on the uh, cash flow statement. And to segue off the dividend payments that we saw in the cash flow statement, this is a chart of United Health Group's dividends from 2011 to 2020 as well as its stock buybacks. So this is really a chart that emphasizes the importance of investing in companies that are going to grow its cash flow rather than the percentage of dividend that you see at any current moment. Because in 2011, United Health Group's dividend was just 61 cents a share, and now in 2020, its dividend per share is about $4.83. This dividend growth over this time period comes out to a dividend compounded annual growth rate of 26%. That is very impressive and means that the company basically doubled its dividend every three years on average. And on top of this, the company has also been buying back shares from 2011 to 2014. It was buying anywhere from 4.8 to 3% uh, of its outstanding shares. From 2015 to 2020, it's really taken that down. And as we could see from looking at the financial statements, at least in 2018 to 2020, it has started to put a lot of resources into making acquisitions and growing its top line and providing value to shareholders that way. And ultimately, I, I think this is a good sign that it's continuing to make acquisitions because I think its business is very efficient and I think it's going to be a good sign that it's going to have continued growth going into the future. And for the sake of transparency, here are my positions in United Health Group. This has been a company I've really only started to acquire recently, even though this has been a company that I've liked and been following for a while. I made my first acquisition at the end of last year in October. Um, I purchased the seven shares for about $323 a share, and then I made a second acquisition in February this year for about $329 a share when the company pulled back. Currently, with the stock being about $390 a share, the current value of my position is about $3,500 when I invested about $2,900. This is a company that is still on my watch list, and if it has any pullbacks, I'm going to be very interested and see if it's at a good point to buy.
The stock market has been really hot lately, so let's pull up a chart and see what the recent price action has been and see if this company is still sitting at a reasonable valuation. So this is a daily candlestick chart that I pulled off of TradingView. And first, it's easy to see that United Health Group has been in a pretty consistent uptrend over the last year or so. And it looks like it recently just broke above some resistance because it had a resistance at about 360 here. And it looked like it had support at around 320, give or take, and it was in this range. And it looks like in March it broke above this top line of this resistance at 360, came back, retested it. And it looks like it's been in a very strong upward movement uh, along with the rest of the market, as well as the uh, price action of the general market that's helping carry it up. And it looks like it also came out with earnings recently and it surpassed analyst expectations. So this is also probably serving as a catalyst for these uh, higher prices recently. And if we look at the bottom here, this is uh, United Health Group's price to earnings. So I'm going to expand a bit and go back just to get a better idea of the range that this stock has been trading in. So it looks like on the upper end, it normally trades between this PE of about 24, give or take, and 20. So it looks like from its history, this looks to be like when the company is fairly valued. If it's below that range, it's probably been a really good deal if you've been able to scoop some up. But this is a stock that I like because as the market has been really hot lately, a lot of valuations have been stretched. So it's, it's important to look for companies that uh, have valuations that are still uh, fairly reasonable. And it continues to show prospects to improve its uh, operating efficiency and cash flows. And while the market has been really hot, if this stock ever pulls back into its moving averages or starts to consolidate sideways, or if it ever does have a meaningful pullback, I'll definitely be looking to accumulate this one in my portfolio. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe to help support this channel. If you're interested in looking at it, other content that I've posted on this channel. I'll leave a link uh, at the end of this video. As always, this is Market Matt, and good luck investing.